I'm getting ready to start. It's my not iPod. recording. Okay, now it's recording. Nope. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Today is Saturday, and uh, we just got home from doing some errands. Eric wanted to take that. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice, so that's why I sound really groggy. But um, we just got back from going to do some grocery shopping. And we went to Whole Foods. I'm just about ready to make Eric some lunch, so I have some pasta here that I'm cooking up. Let me see if I can move this so that I can. Sweet! Okay. So we just got new camera equipment, and that's why I'm showing everything out. We got a new lens and a microphone, so we're gonna give it a shot. pizza sauce in there and my goodness I forgot how good that was. <clears throat> Super yummy. Eric is having pizza. You wanna get a fork? You have a spoon. How about you grab a fork? Let's grab a fork but you wanna go sit on your high chair? Sit on your high chair. groceries away. Here. So I am going to be baking pies today. I needed some gluten-free flour for the pie filling. That's all in here. This is the best dairy for ice cream you will ever eat. So I am on a gluten, dairy, and sugar fast right now. This is for Thanksgiving. Don't worry. Some pumpkin for a pumpkin pie today. Um, Eric was having a meltdown in the store so we got him granola bars. This here is more dairy free ice cream. And then this here is just regular ice cream for company. Um, I think that's all. And then I also went to just a local store and got this big thing of coconut. It's coconut cream, but it's kind of, it's more like a full fat coconut milk. It was $8 for this big, huge can. <clears throat> Such a steal. And then I also got some dates as well. So now, um, I'm just going to put the groceries away and get started on some baking. I'm getting ready to make the apple pie. Okay. Hey, this hold is on. the one that I'm making. This is the one that I'm making. Most of my recipes come out of Pinterest. So, we're gonna give it a try. It's gluten free, it looks amazing. We're gonna see if it actually turns out that way. A little fun fact about me is that I absolutely love to bake. I have been baking for years and years. My mom is a great baker. She taught me how to bake pies. I actually worked in a bakery before I got married um, and baked there. I loved that so much. But when we got married, Josh actually has a severe gluten allergy. And so I kind of had to learn how to adapt different baking skills. So everything that I make has to be gluten free um, for him. So it's kind of a learning curve, learning to bake gluten free, especially from scratch. But I was determined to learn and it has been well worth my effort. So this recipe is a little bit more on the difficult side, but I really encourage you, if you're intimidated about gluten-free baking, just dive in and get started because the sooner you learn, the easier it'll be. So I had um, just mixed the dry ingredients together and then I cut up two sticks of butter. That's what makes it so good and flaky. Um, but then I was supposed to mix the butter until it was like pea-sized balls, like the dough. So it took seriously so long the butter was straight out of the fridge 
and my hands were so sore by the time it was done I think it was like 10 or 15 minutes until the dough was the right consistency so maybe next time I'll take the butter out a little bit before I use it so it's not so terribly cold plus my tapioca flour was fresh out of the freezer too so it was like an ice house in that bowl <laughs> back after that little dance break <laughs> and I was seriously just mixing and mixing and mixing and then after it was mixed and the right consistency I went to add eggs this recipe called for two eggs by the way I will link the recipe below um, this is not my recipe I take zero credit for it but I find sometimes that if you can just watch someone make it and see how it's done it's so much easier to learn so I added the eggs <clears throat> excuse me and the maple syrup it called for honey and I didn't have any so I just used the maple syrup and then you mix and mix and mix again so mine turned out just a little bit on the drier side looking back now I think I would have added either a little bit of almond milk or another egg but I still managed to like work it into little discs and towards the end I did add a little bit of almond flour or almond milk just because the last little disc was so dry um, but then I just wrapped them up in some shrink wrap and stuck them in the fridge for a few hours until I was ready to bake them. Now I am starting on the pie filling so I'm just using Granny Smith apples I think they were from Aldi's and I looking back now I wish I would have used all of them I think I only used I used all of these but one um, and I could have definitely used another apple so I think I used a total of five apples looking back now like I said I wish I would have used six because the pie did kind of sink in just a little bit it would have been better if it were full so I just peeled the apples cored them and then sliced them up and mixed all my ingredients together for the filling <laughs> shout out to my husband for being amazing and filming this for me um, he actually has a marketing agency so he has all of the skills for videography and photography and so he was a very helping hand in the kitchen that day and helped me get different angles and told me how to do what because I am so like clueless when it comes to technology and anything to do with like cameras or computers or microphones he actually ordered um, a new microphone a new lens so that I would have better quality equipment to do these vlogs so kudos to him for helping me out in the video department <laughs> so that I could actually mix it without making an even bigger mess so by now you probably realize that I am like a disaster in the kitchen my main focus is to get whatever I'm baking or cooking into the oven as fast as possible and then I clean up later so I just fly through my baking and the kitchen's a mess as you'll see at the end of this video like flour is everywhere I dumped my egg yolks it's just a disaster but I clean everything up when I'm done let me know, are you a clean-as-you-go baker or are you a destructive baker and then you clean up afterwards? I would love to know if I have any fellow destructive bakers out there. So here I am flouring my surface for the gluten-free pie crust. I have learned that you have to flour your surface and your pie crust in order for you to be able to roll it out with the rolling pin well enough. So I just floured my, the top of my pie crust and then I rolled it out 
um, and then you want to keep kind of like flipping it and alternating it and then adding more flour as you go it just works better that way and you do have to be a little bit more careful with gluten-free crust just because they do tend to like break easier but I was really surprised with this texture of this recipe it was like amazing pie crust so if you are looking for like a really uh, dependable um, flaky crust uh, make this one it was so good As you can see, it like totally cracked and fell apart in the pie pan, but I knew that it's very pliable dough and you can just kind of squish it all back together. It is actually very forgiving, um, so I didn't worry about if it cracked or fell apart, and especially since it was the bottom crust, I was like, no one's going to see it anyway, so it was fine if it just kind of like, you know, fell apart. here I wanted to make sure that you see because it's very important to wet the edges of the pie crust so that if you are using a other like a top crust uh, like a double crust then um, it's very important to wet the edges so that your top crust will stick to your bottom crust otherwise it just won't stick right or it won't lay right and then you won't be able to like seal the edges so that the filling doesn't bubble out. attempt to do the things I do especially with gluten-free crust but I was determined to try my hand at the crisscross I don't even know what the term is for it but the crisscross pie crust top thingy so as you can tell it was totally not perfect like a lot of the pieces broke and I just kind of like patched it back together again um, it did turn out like it was very good but the crust was just with the top crust it was almost too much crust so I think when I make it for Thanksgiving I'm going to use a crumb top instead of this crisscross top just because it was like I don't know just a little bit too much dough Is my favorite part of baking pies trimming off the extra pieces of the crust and then um, I don't even know what it's called like making the sides nice <laughs> there's a term for it and I don't know what it is but that's always my favorite part of making the pies So I just plopped an egg into the measuring cup and just added like, I don't know, maybe a couple teaspoons of water um, and then you mix that up until it's, I don't know, kind of fluffy <laughs> and then you just brush it across the pie and this makes it, um, it helps the pie bake with like a golden brown finish. Oh, so good.
To say that we enjoyed this pie was an understatement. Of course, I forgot to get the finished product shot, but I stuck it in the oven and oh, it was so good. So there you have it. There is how you make a gluten-free pie. I hope it was fun and informative and I hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I will see you in my next vlog. Bye. Thank you.